there be times I'm looking at my checking statement in my bank account, and I just see like three deductions from Apple in one month. I'm like, yo, it'll be like nine ninety nine, twenty one ninety nine. Five ninety nine. I'm like, where'd the five ninety nine one come from? At that point, y'all niggas is just stealing from me. At this point, Apple needs to cut it out. But now, what if Walmart is doing the same exact thing in a much more secret way? Title of this video right here is Walmart is stealing from you, hoping you don't notice. So we can't fall victim to Walmart over here trying to be greedy with their income and their revenue for the business. So without further ado, let's hop straight into this video. Let's see what's going on. You're not crazy. Food has never been this expensive. Guess how much this cost. This is $60 worth of groceries from Walmart. Just stuff for dinner for tonight. This cost $76.99. I could have gone out to eat tonight and it would have been cheaper. And portions are getting smaller. This is not 750 grams. 434 grams. If there's one thing in this world that I know, it's what a goddamn Big Mac looks like. Are you kidding me? What is this? Wait, where's the cream? Not gonna lie, I haven't had a Big Mac in a while. I'm a little bit hungry right now. That joint was kind of looking, nah, it wasn't looking that good. Where, where, where's the cream? Um. Hmm. Yet, costing more than ever. 34-year-old Hannah Schall says she can't cut back on formula for her nine-month-old, but the price... It used to be, you know, $35. Now we're paying $50. So that's $15 in nine months. That's crazy. On the other hand, companies are cutting corners in more ways than one. He complained that the last time he ate Quaker Dips granola bars, they didn't taste quite right and discovered that the chocolate coating on the bars has been replaced with a chocolate E coating. And giving solutions that are unfit for survival. And who's left to deal with the aftermath? Us. And new reports tell of people having trouble feeding their families. This is getting beyond ridiculous. And like, I almost cried today. $10 no for way. a gallon of milk. Um, what the f With one incident so immoral, it's sending customers to the doctor's office. I'm calling you out, Tampax. You did this and you didn't tell anyone. Shame on you. Grocers and food companies are robbing you, hoping you don't notice. But there are ways you can fight back. In 2024, the American consumer has to pay about 25% more for groceries than what they paid back in January 2020. And even compared to last year, prices are on the rise. Specifically, the cost of non-carbonated juices and drinks is up 29%. Sugar is up 7.2%. And beef steak is up almost 10.7%. And this slow and steady incline has reached the point that the average shopper can't help but take notice. It's happening gradually. You know, the first year things were five to 10% more expensive. You don't notice it that much, but five years of that and we're like, why are groceries almost double the cost of what they were back in 2019? For years, we have all been told to blame inflation, but is there more to the story? Reports and surveys suggest that three in every five Americans are struggling with financial hardships because of rising prices. Damn. And among them, families with low incomes are taking the biggest hit. The prices of everything, of cars, um, of food, of housing, has gone up so much and income has not gone up a drop. The result is that millions of Americans can no longer afford groceries, a full tank of gas, or- Amer America just isn't the same anymore. It's kind of like if you're really experiencing like serious hardship, got a like another island would be a, a great choice. Public transportation, let alone pay their bills or credit card debt on time. And with living costs only escalating, some shoppers have been left with one alternative, theft. A new report indicates that while shoplifting has always been a major problem, it is steadily on the rise due to food inflation. So. How are retailers and supermarket companies responding to this spike in theft? Walmart said, y'all stealing from us, now we stealing from you. Let's get at it. Theft? Well... You may have seen something like this yourself while out shopping. Big name retail stores like Walmart and Target are putting everyday items, including deodorant, under lock and key to prevent them from being stolen. That's right. Instead of bringing the prices down, 
and to avoid hiring more staff, these companies, which earn tens of billions of dollars annually, have decided to put merchandise under lock and key. So after you get things to already unlock one of these counters, they take that you bought and they stick it in another little case and you gotta walk around the store with it in another little case. What's up, Walmart? That's just retarded. Get it together. Why are you locking things up that you're actively recording? In countries like Canada, the situation is even worse. Troubled by the inflating grocery prices, some Canadians living near the border are choosing to drive to America just to be able to buy cheaper groceries. In fact, Brandy Dustin, a TikTok user living in British Columbia, went viral when she posted about how she saved almost $300 every month by driving to Montana for her grocery runs. And I know they say support local, but right now everybody is suffering hugely. We're all trying to make it and it is so much cheaper for me to go next door than it is to shop in my own country. Which, luckily for her, was only a 15 minute drive away. The TikTok user's comment section was flooded with fellow Canadians, shocked at how much more affordable the food prices were in their neighboring country. How can anyone support local when the prices are insane? You just can't anymore. Gotta get whatever is cheapest now. Lots of Canadians are driving to the US to grocery shop. It's getting too expensive in Canada and the portions of food have also gotten smaller. Canadians are driving to the US for food and Americans are driving to Canada for affordable prescriptions. But recently, tensions over the country's out of control food prices have reached new heights and Canucks have taken matters into their own hands. See, in May, Canadians started a nationwide boycott of the country's biggest grocer, Loblaws. And with over half of Canadian citizens polled by Canada's National Observer in support of the boycott and over 18% actively taking part, it seemed the people were definitively fed up. This car cost me $130 for a meal and like some snacks basically, so I'm kind of over it. <laughs> The online discourse also heightened as Loblaws is out of control. A Reddit community dedicated- $130 for a meal and some snacks is not adding up. Boy, like what is this man buying? Cated to the Loblaws boycott, gained almost 90,000 members in just a few months. The subreddit is full of posts with people talking about the grocer overcharging items, reducing the quantity, and even lying on the packaging. Our community has taken the time to organize a movement which aims to boycott Loblaw stores until prices can be reduced, says a Reddit post by the community moderator. Since its founding, our community has seen hundreds of ridiculously priced goods, dumb deals, rotten produce, and more. Loblaw and other major grocers in Canada enjoy the benefits of a monopoly on an essential service and force us to pay utterly ridiculous prices. Canadians are facing a cost of living crisis and grocers are a major contributor to this. Vulnerable populations such as seniors, persons with disabilities, and those on fixed incomes are left further behind. Food banks across the country are seeing a drastic increase in demand. Another member of the subreddit posted, store level- I, mean, I want y'all to comment down below. How do y'all feel about the grocery prices? Like today I just went to the grocery just to pick up some oatmeal, um, a carton of eggs, and milk. Yeah, I ended up paying, like, damn. I ended up paying by like 30, at least 30 or $40. <laughs> that sounds insane, but yeah. And, two, and like two bananas, damn. Nah, yeah, the grocery prices are getting crazy. Well, employee here, I overheard from a manager today that last week's sales were down in my store by over $100,000. That's down about 15% from last year's numbers. The boycott is 100% working. Keep it up, folks. But had the boycott gone too far? Posters had begun circulating Canada and online dubbing May 12th, steal from Loblaws Day. And while some shoppers sympathize with the cause, it just seems like the reflection of a broader popular outrage towards uh, what appear to be super high grocery prices, corporate greed, and um, while I personally would never steal, uh, I can understand the sentiment. Many were dumbfounded. It doesn't really make sense, like I, I don't understand what's the motive behind it. And neither did those on the Loblaws is out of control subreddit, and that made them suspicious. See, while moderators were quick to condemn steal from Loblaws Day, there was something about the sudden onslaught of negative PR the boycott was receiving that seemed almost engineered. So one Reddit user put together a timeline. It turned out 
that the first recorded evidence of this campaign originated from a tweet of a poster from the Toronto newspaper, West End Phoenix, on April 18th. Just over two hours later, the subreddit's moderator was contacted by the Daily Hive for a quote. Shortly after this, fellow Canadian news outlets took hold of the story. The Reddit user pointed out that these articles all also used the same image of the poster that the West End Phoenix had, aside from Now Toronto, which pictured the poster on a different bulletin board. Still, the fact that only two posters had been photographed and the speed at which the media grabbed onto the story struck the Reddit user as odd. So was the poster itself a false flag? The user asked. Was it ever truly seen in the wild other than the two copies we have evidence of? But as these posters began popping up across Canada, something else caught the subreddit's attention. As one Reddit user put it, the odd thing about these posters is that they're so well made. Check out the printer ink. No one is using a home printer for that. Someone used an office printer. This means that somewhere there is an office with a timestamp that shows someone made dozens, if not hundreds of these posters it would be very interesting to see where they were first printed. Another user pointed out the strangeness of the web free campaign, commenting, Flyers, with no internet presence? Yeah, I'd wager this wasn't done by anyone below the age of 40. It's giving, hello fellow kids, undercover cop vibes. However, after May came and went without Loblaws meeting the protesters' demands, the boycott has continued indefinitely as the Canadians with the access to do so learn to shop differently. Uh, we're also seeing uh, uh, like 50% more usage of co-ops in Ontario. Mom and pop uh, shops are getting more business than they ever had before. You know, people are uh, educating themselves and they're finding better ways and cheaper ways to shop. And uh, many people say they're never going back. But of course, it's not just Canadians who are exasperated by the surging food prices. Sugar, flour, bread, those are basic food. Eggs, you can't buy eggs. Even lime, you could have got a 50 pence lime, now it's a pound. Everything is going up. Clothes and things, they're not going up because you don't need clothes, but you need food. Wages doesn't go up. Kellogg's, one of the largest food manufacturers in America, has also been making headlines since people started boycotting the brand after their CEO suggested people eat cereal to fight rising food prices. We gotta reach the consumer where they are. So we're advertising about cereal for dinner. If you think about the cost of cereal for a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's gonna be <laughs> this much- This man is trying to make money. More affordable. This backfired, enraging consumers, with many cereal. calling the CEO out of touch cereal doesn't and sound a hypocrite bad, for making bad. cereal more expensive. After the CEO's remarks, the public also began speculating that this was only a sly tactic to get people hooked on cereals before they inflate prices later on, something that Kellogg's has become infamous for doing over the years. And with the Kellogg's boycott creating more and more buzz on social media, Kellogg's decided to make their products even cheaper in an attempt to cover up the controversy. However, a TikToker named Trendy John revealed that this wasn't the case everywhere. So I've had a lot of people ask me to go to a lower income area in Orlando. So I'm at the Walmart on Colonial. And since a lot of people typically use food stamps to be able to buy their groceries, people wanted to see what the levels of Kellogg's product looked like in that area. The video, that gained over 3 million views within a few weeks, shocked viewers who hadn't known that Kellogg's kept their items at regular prices in lower income areas. As one user questioned, but it looks like the prices are not as discounted as I've seen in other stores. Now, why would that be? Another viewer had their suspicions. They do this at purpose at local, low-income community stores because they depend on stamps or assistance being used while forcing to pay full price, keeping the community poor. But groceries aren't the only food items escalating in price. Food away from home or restaurant menus are increasing at an even faster pace. See, the minimum wages for restaurant workers in California and some other states increasing from $16 to $20. It turns out money isn't coming out of the billionaire CEO's pockets. I'm not gonna lie, $20, $20 for a fast food like, minimum wage, not that bad. I remember when it used to be 875 
but customers. Yep, fast food chains have used the demand for a living wage as an opportunity to increase prices. Take, for example, In N Out, which increased its burger prices by 25 cents following the new minimum wage. What's up, guys? So it's, it's finally happened. The Flying Dutchman is $5. The Flying Dutchman is $5 now, you guys. Similarly, Burger King increased its Texas Whopper meal by 12% and Big Fish meal by a whopping 53%. Chick-fil-A also faced heavy criticism from its customers. Just a couple of months earlier, for a 21% hike in its prices in a period of only two years. Jumping on the trend, Subway also increased the price of its iconic footlong sub. Tell me why I just got a tuna salad and a turkey sub from Subway and it cost me $30. And then there's one fast food chain that's taken on a new pricing model. In February, Wendy's CEO, Kirk Tanner revealed that the chain will be introducing an Uber-like system for deciding the cost of menu items next year. This means that the price of food at Wendy's will change frequently, depending on demand. In a survey conducted by the Daily Mail, more than half of consumers had one word to describe the chain's venture into dynamic pricing, gouging. But no chain tops America's favorite restaurant when it comes to inflating prices. An executive for McDonald's, a brand that's synonymous with the word fast food itself, recently confessed that the average price of the chain's menu items has increased 40% since 2019. Can you tell me how much a double quarter pounder with cheese would be with a milkshake and fries? Damn, sixteen twenty-five. Recently, bro, YouTuber that's, Chris bro, that's what I don't understand. How people still go to McDonald's even though like a meal costs like fifteen dollars or sixteen dollars when you could get like a solid like real meal from other places for that money. Hart gained attention after he came across an abandoned McDonald's in Alaska, which closed in 1994. However, while the 90s nostalgia might have drawn viewers in, it was the vintage menu board that gave the upload its shock value. Two dollars forty-five cents for a Big Mac. $3.36 for a Happy Meal, $1.95 for an Egg McMuffin. These were the affordable prices that the chain had been founded on. But you don't always have to look decades back to realize how much McDonald's has raised its prices in the U.S. over the past few years. Sometimes, wow. just a trip to another country is enough to make jaws drop. For example, the Korean Twitch streamer Mayo was live in China with a group of friends. The group was dumbfounded when they found a McDonald's advertisement with prices that were just at a fraction of those found here in the US. Dude, look at this. Oh my God. This is only $10. You get a get bucket this. of chicken, four drinks, Dude, that, four that burgers, so fries good. and pies. I want that pie. Three, four, five. Mom, give me the pie. That's crazy cheap. As you'd expect, the video went viral and sparked a debate about surging prices in America. One Reddit user commented, American here, and I will say there were times I craved McDonald's with the new prices, and the new prices have made me change my mind. There's one good positive for inflation. While another user said, just got large fries yesterday in America, and it costs like $4.50. We get ripped off here, to be honest. Surging fast food costs are clearly affecting a large segment of the U.S. population. Early in February, the CEO of McDonald's said that the restaurant giant is continuously seeing lower spending by lower-income customers who earned $45,000 or less annually. And while these food companies and grocers almost reflexively start talking about inflation statistics when faced with consumers' dwindling bank accounts, is it possible that this is just an excuse to boost profits? For instance, PepsiCo recorded revenue growth of about 12 to 13 percent, even when inflation was at a record high for 40 years. So were the company's price hikes an effort to keep up with inflation like they claimed? Or was this simply a scheme to improve revenue performance? When it came to corporations that did appear to be taking a financial hit in recent years, could they really be trusted? Many Americans have even started accusing institutions of not publishing the correct inflation reports. 
Take a look at this video by TikTok content creator, iBobbyShell. So when something becomes too expensive, we remove it from inflation and CPI reporting. The price of coffee is up 27%, so we remove it from the inflation calculation. No wonder inflation is 3 to 4%. Anytime anything that's a part of that number goes up like crazy, we remove it. We kill it. We just get rid of it. This is why you can't trust anyone. This is what I mean when I say economists, when they report on the economy, they are talking to other capitalists, all right? When you can remove the main driver of inflation, which is corporate greed from the inflation report itself, and then go on your little media spin and be like, oh, economy's doing great and see inflation's going down. No, it's not. You just didn't report the whole truth. There's a word for this ignored economic factor, greedflation. Greedflation is when companies inflate <coughs> the prices of their products to maximize their profit margins. And over the past few years, various manufacturers and grocers have been caught engaging in the Scroogean practice. In June 2023, Canada's largest bread supplier, Canada Bread Co., was charged with a $50 million fine after being found guilty of fixing bread prices in the country for over a decade. The company eventually confessed to unjustifiably increasing the price of its bread products over the years, only to keep up with other competitors. As for consumer compensation, back in 20... But I mean, that, that sounds like business, though. Like, if you start a business, you're going to, you know, price it the way that you can make the most money and have a successful business. If you don't get customers, then you don't get customers. That's the thing. Everyone has the ability to not shop at these certain stores, Every, like... No need to complain about McDonald's increasing their prices. Just don't go there anymore. Or like same exact thing with the supermarket. Like there's certain supermarkets that have higher prices and certain ones that have less. Now I do get it when it comes to the supermarket and inflation because that's where we all shop at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? That's where we all shop. But other than that, there's other ways of going about it when it comes to bread. It may come to the point where people need to start making their own bread, bro. But America is inflating like Everything's inflating in America. Property prices, food, basic needs, the whole nine yards. 2018, Loblaw Companies Limited, another implicated firm, attempted to soothe over the scandal have, have by mailing out smarter with our decisions and where we place our money. $25 gift cards to consumers. In a similar case, CalMaine Foods, the biggest egg producer in the US, was charged with the crime of price fixing in November 2023. The years-long lawsuit revealed that they had been artificially reducing supply in the country to increase egg prices. Consumers were not compensated, but the lawsuit was supposed to lead to better market regulation and reduce prices. Then there was the March 2024 class action lawsuit where multiple major sugar producers in the US were accused of conspiring with each other to fix, raise, maintain, and stabilize sugar prices, which has been happening as early as January 1st, 2019, according to the Morello's court finding. And since the lawsuit is still in its early stages, there has been no consumer compensation. Apart from food manufacturers, grocers in the US are not innocent of overcharging customers either. In 2019, a Walmart shopper filed a class action lawsuit against the retail giant, when he found out he was being charged more than the printed price tags for some of the weighted goods. He also claimed that the actual weight of certain goods was lower than what Walmart had listed on the packaging. TikTok user Melissa Simonson explains how Walmart got away with this. These photos were used in a recent lawsuit. So if you look closely, you can see this is normally $1.48 per pound, but it was on rollback for 98 cents. It measured in at 15 pounds, 0.38 ounces. But look here, on the receipt, it actually got charged 23 pounds instead of 15 pounds. Here's another example of pork that was weighing in at 1.98 pounds, price per pound 517, and total price 1024. When it was charged up, it was charged for 2.19 pounds at 467, so it did the rollback price, and came out to the same total, 1024, in simpler terms, wow. Walmart was promoting cheaper prices, but to maintain the price before the price drop, they started charging more for the weight. That so in the end, you would have been paying more for less product. Though Walmart was forced to pay a $45 million settlement to the plaintiffs, 
when it comes to accepting the wrongdoings. The company still refuses to take any allegations as truthful. But greedflation isn't the only tactic food companies implement yeah, in the name is, of that profit. That in itself is definitely Walmart stealing from its customers, 100%. But they end up having to spend $45 million to settle that class action lawsuit. Major corporations are gaslighting us, so trying to make us it. believe that what we are seeing is not real, that shrinkflation is not a real thing, or what some people call it, a stealth price rise. Shrinkflation is very real. Yes, shrinkflation has also become one of the biggest contributors when it comes to making already pricey food even more expensive. Shrinkflation is when the manufacturers give you smaller amounts of the product for the same price, and in many cases, even an increased price, without clearly informing the customers about it. Take for example, 100 grams less of your favorite cereal for 10 cents more, a Valentine's gift with a missing row of chocolate, or substantially less Pringles for the same price. You know, just cuz. With shrinkage, mm. you're not just paying more for your weekly grocery. I'm not gonna just lie, cause. what? With shrinkage, Palmer's y'all wrong for this one right here, bro. This is just petty. Like this right here is just petty, bro. Cocoa butter formula—they have mad space in between. Wow. You're not just paying more for your weekly grocery trips. You're paying for less. And everyone from small food vendors to multinational chains have found a way to profit off of this deceptive trend. Just a few days after Wendy's announced their dynamic Uber-like pricing model, one regular customer, who goes by the TikTok username, the Big Red Dog, posted a video talking about how the restaurant chain has drastically reduced the size of one popular product without changing the price. I noticed that my small coffee, my small iced coffee from Wendy's. Well, of course you noticed. Nah, let me stop. <laughs> nah, I could tell you noticed though. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Come on, man. Sometimes we just need to give up the fast food for one year. Just one year. Nice. I noticed that my small coffee, my small iced coffee from Wendy's suddenly child size. And I remember the first time it happened, I asked the kid who was like a teenager about it. And he was really like weird about it and just would not admit to me that they changed the size. He was like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. That's the small. Well, today, just out of curiosity, I asked the girl, I was like, hey, did they change their sizes a while back on the cups like of coffee? She was like, oh, yeah, we changed that a little while back. And now it's the old like kid size. That's a small. But shrinkflation doesn't stop only at food. It targets everything from your pantry to your bathroom shelf, toilet rolls, toothpaste, toothbrushes, soap bars, shampoo and cleaning supplies are all falling victim to the subtle profit making deception by manufacturers, which a UK based nonprofit working for consumer protection recently conducted research that revealed serious downsizing in some of the most used consumer products. For example, the research noticed that Sensodyne downsized its Total Care Extra Fresh toothpaste from 100 milliliters to 75 milliliters, which is a direct 25% reduction. Similarly, Press has also been called out by several customers for reducing the quantity of toothpaste. All right, people, shrinkflation is real. See this thing of toothpaste? 5.1 ounces. Crest. We bought a new tube of toothpaste, exactly the same size, 100%. 3.3. Same size container. Same brand. The research from which also found that since 2015, Andrex has been reducing the size of its standard four-pack toilet roll, which has now decreased from 240 sheets to 221, an 8% reduction. Several other brands have also been caught shrinking the size of the sheets themselves. Another Andrex product that's been impacted by shrinkflation is Classic Clean Washlets, which used to have 40 wipes a pack. Now, that number is down to 36. But where this reduction becomes the most concerning is when it affects personal health products and medical devices. And, unfortunately for consumers, it appears that's already happening. Tampax has recently been making a lot of headlines after a number of users took social media platforms to accuse the company of shrinking their tampon sizes. It all began with a Reddit post 
by user read protection 5682. Are you effing kidding me, Tampax? This is just within this year. This revelation quickly led to backlash against the company as the change in tampon sizes made women think that there might be something wrong with their bodies. I felt like the supers were not lasting so long for me, but I thought I was bleeding worse and didn't make the connection. I do use a cup, but it's not comfortable for me for every period, so I rely on Tampax for those times. Enraging, a user commented under the post. That's some I can't believe they are shrinking tampons. I have adenomyosis and I bleed heavily. The ultras already only last an hour. I hope they realize women. I think she's giving a little too much information in this in this Reddit post right here. All right, I, I, I get it. You know, they're shrinking the tampon size, but you know what I'm saying? You bleeding heavily. I don't think we all really want to hear that. As women know about which ones we use for about which period of time during our periods, these are not accurate anymore because you shrunk them. And women have actually sought doctor's appointments thinking something is wrong with their bodies because you did this and you didn't tell anyone. Shame on you. However, despite Damn. photo evidence, well, Tampax you know. has denied shrinking the size of their products and has remained adamant that they're adhering to industry absorbency standards. But even if products aren't shrinking, that doesn't mean they've remained the same. Skimflation. It's the practice of swapping out higher quality ingredients for cheaper ones. And unfortunately Man. for consumers. So now we got inflation, shrinkflation, and skimpflation. The hell's next? The changes often fly under the radar. See, while shoppers can measure products for shrinkflation, there's often no giveaways when it comes to quality. And this means the profit boosting tactic that doesn't just put a strain on consumers' wallets, but potentially their health. Grocery manufacturers of America estimated that 10% of the commercially available food in the United States is adulterated. Popular spices like basil and chili powder from a range of different brands. Anything that's kind of colored orange brown and ground up can be passed off as turmeric. The FDA says seafood fraud can occur when a less expensive species of fish is substituted for a more expensive species. After all, it's kind of hard to know what fish you're buying, right? If you're an experienced chef or fishmonger, you can look at like a red snapper filet and tell whether it's red snapper, but 99% of consumers can't. On TikTok, former McDonald's corporate chef Mike Harich revealed the multiple ways McDonald's could be cutting corners to make their quarter pounder hit a quarter pound, both at the expense of quality and size. If the fatty beef portions uh, are cheaper than the lean portions, then they can actually make uh, a fattier beef patty still hitting the appropriate weights, but when you cook it, more of that fat is released and you might have a smaller looking patty. And while it's not clear if this is one of those fattier beef patties, there have been several photos showing McDonald's beef patties on the leaner side. You gotta beat me, right? I was like, damn, this thin, look at this patty. Y'all, it's so thin. <laughs> what? McDonald's! <laughs> Another example of skimflation is now nah, because you can just see through that actually. <laughs> Yo, not nah, a girl, buddy. What? Yeah. John is thin. McDonald's. You can see through this mother. Another example of skimflation is Nestle's drumstick. A dispute sparked on social media after a TikTok clip by user OliBubs09 went viral, amassing several million views. See, the user had carried out a DIY experiment by leaving an unpackaged drumstick out at room temperature for almost 24 hours. The results? Well, while there was some drip action, a substantial amount of the ice cream remained unmelted. This concerned viewers who described the drumstick as scary and poison. However, according to creator and dietitian Abby Sharp, this wasn't indicative that the ice cream was toxic, but that it contained emulsifiers. You can find these additives in like less premium ice cream products because they help manufacturers use less of the really pricey ingredients like the cream and more air while keeping everything fluffy and together. But while the use of emulsifiers well, is usually why, not- I don't know why people are getting shocked with products like this. Like, yo, that drumstick just looks artificially made. It's not real organic 
ice cream made from like real like they're gonna have chemicals in there 100 percent believed to be health hazardous a spanish study in mice found that several emulsifiers that are used in microwave meals butter and ice creams can actually lead to some unintentional health complications. The researchers observed pregnant mice and found unintentional weight loss and anxious behaviors in 10-week-old offspring. And this is just one of the many instances of skimflation, increasing delivery times, restaurants and bars being understaffed, and hotels no longer providing basic amenities are all a part of this phenomenon. So. How can consumers fight back as corporations continue to profit at their expense? It's simple. Call them out. The more attention that's drawn to these issues, the easier it is for shoppers to take action, whether that's by boycotting brands, spending money elsewhere, or demanding increased transparency. After all, when the public rallies together, they're capable of big change. For example, supermarkets good. in Germany, France, and South Korea have already started using signage to inform customers of any shrinkflation. And even President Biden recently called out companies for shrinkflation and expressed his intentions to crack down on this growing phenomenon. The more we talk about these problems, the more pressure we put on companies to be transparent and fair. So, while change might be slow through the power of the people, rest assured, it's coming. If you have more topics you'd like Hey, bruh, <clears throat> definitely, when it comes to, like, the supermarket, like, overpricing certain things, you're able to choose who you buy from, where you buy from, and, like, what you get, so you can't be mad about the ingredients, I always read the ingredients on everything I buy, let me not say everything, but most things I buy, like, sauces, yeah, I mean, other than that, it's pretty much organic, like, bananas, chicken, organic, everything like that, but... What Walmart did with that pricing situation was very, very sneaky. I would say that's like one of the main things just to keep an eye out for, that that sneaky price change. But they end up having to pay a class action lawsuit, so hopefully no other corporations are doing that in the future to come. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Smash the like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and comment down below any other videos you want to watch together. Peace. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one.